Ciao, grazie. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Wednesday night. Amen. Praise God. Have your Bibles tonight. I want you to stand with me and turn with me, if you will. To uh, Let's go to the book of Acts, if you will, chapter 4. Verse number 31, as, as you, many of you know, uh, as a church, we have been in 21 days of uh, prayer and fasting. And uh, I want to, uh, the Lord... Lay this verse on my heart today. I want to share it with you tonight as we open up. Book of Acts, chapter 4, and uh, verse 31. When you have it, say amen. amen. Scripture says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want you to notice that, that first part of that verse. And when they had prayed. And when... They had prayed. The place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The Bible tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want you to know tonight, saints of God, there's still power in prayer tonight. And I believe and I know that I know that uh, there's going to be there's going to be answers, results that's going to come from this time, this season of prayer and fasting that we're in, uh, that, uh, that we're going to see, and God's going to receive the glory from it. And I'm expecting it tonight, amen? I, I thought about the, the time that uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, football player, that he collapsed on that field. Uh, it's been a long, long, long time since I've seen people come, Brother Roger, to a time of prayer like they did when that young man collapsed. I mean, the entire teams, both teams, uh, fell to their knees. People praying in that stadium. People all across the nation was praying. Uh, every news outlet was asking people to please pray. Every social media outlet asking people to please pray. And uh, how just how wonderful that was to see people come together in prayer. And uh, it still, still works. There's power in prayer. And look what took place in that young man's life. And uh, doing so much better now. And that is a result of prayer tonight. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. You may be in a place that you need an answer tonight. You may be seeking the Lord for something in your life. Or whatever it is that only you and God knows about. I, want, I just want to encourage you. Just keep pressing. Keep pushing. Keep seeking the Lord because there's power in prayer. Notice what the scripture says. And when they had prayed, praise God. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Amen. So whatever need you've got tonight, amen, the Lord is more than able to touch and grant that need tonight. Amen. We've got several needs in our church body tonight. We've got an urgent need tonight. Uh, Sister Donita's daughter, uh, Darla, as many of you know, uh, was rushed to the hospital yesterday evening. And uh, she was uh, unresponsive and still unresponsive uh, as of right now. Uh, but uh, Sister Miki, if you will, share with us uh, what you just shared with me just a minute ago. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Amen. So remember this tonight, an urgent need. Also, I want to continue to pray for Brother C. Stevens. Uh, he's still in the hospital. I want to continue to pray for him. He did get a good report uh, yesterday morning that uh, they are seeing signs of improvement with him. And uh, so we just want to continue to pray for Brother C. tonight. Amen. Also, continue to pray for Sister Jenny McQuarrie. 
uh, want to continue to lift her up before the Lord. She needs a miracle. She needs a healing touch of God in her body. Uh, talked to Sister Sandy uh, yesterday, and uh, everything's still about the same uh, with Sister Jenny. So we just want to continue to pray for her. Amen. Just a, a lot of sickness in her church. There's a lot of families in her church that's going through situations and dealing with things uh, that only God can uh, move on move on behalf of tonight. And uh, I'm believing God's going to touch and move upon every need of every family in our church body tonight. Amen. Praise God. Anybody tonight on my left-hand side has got an urgent request tonight? Anybody? Yes. Amen. Sister Joyce has been sick, and uh, so I want to pray for her. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Yes, amen. So remember this. Anyone else tonight? <clears throat> amen. So remember this tonight. Anyone else tonight? Praise God. Amen. So remember this to bust at water lines. Amen. So remember that I didn't, I didn't know that. Thank you, Sister Lion. Amen. So remember this tonight. Anyone else? <coughs> yes. Amen. Remember this tonight. Anyone else tonight? Remember this. Anyone else? <coughs> yes. Yes, let's remember this. Amen. Anyone else tonight? <coughs> yes, amen. Let's remember this. Amen. Anyone else but Roger? Yes. Yes, amen. Let's remember this man of God tonight. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Yes, amen. Let's remember this. Anyone else tonight? I mean, all those in sport requests by the raise of hand. I mean, if you will, let's stretch forth our hands together tonight. Let's pray together. Lord, we come before you tonight. So thankful, Lord, once again for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your house tonight. Lord, to lift up holy hands and to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. Lord, as we commit this service into your hands tonight, God, we pray, Lord, that not our will, but that your will shall be done in this service tonight. God, I pray through the songs that sung, through the ministering of your word tonight, God, that you touch and minister to every need, every heart that's in this sanctuary. Lord, to those that's with us by way of live stream tonight, God, you see their need tonight. And I pray, God, that by your divine power tonight, God, that you touch, Lord, minister to their needs tonight. God, I pray for every request tonight, God, every request. Lord, it's been spoken tonight. God, I pray that you touch. Lord, you move on behalf of these knees tonight. God, we pray your word tonight that declares whatever we ask. Believe it in prayer that we shall receive it, Lord. We stand upon your word tonight, God, knowing, Lord, that you are able to do above what we ask or think of tonight. And Lord, we just turn these knees. God, we commit them into your hands tonight. 
Lord, I know, God, that you're able to touch, God, and to move on behalf of every need, God, that's been spoken tonight. Lord, every hand that was raised signifying an unspoken need tonight. God, you know that need, Lord. You see the desire of every heart that's in this house tonight. God, grant that need tonight. And, Lord, we just praise you. We glorify you, God. Lord, we magnify you, God, and we praise you in advance tonight for what you're going to do on behalf of these knees tonight, God, for what you're going to do in this service tonight. And we give you glory and praise and honor for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's put our hands together right now. Come on, let's give him praise tonight. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Worship the Lord.
Praise God. I'm thankful for that light tonight. Amen. Praise God. We want to worship the Lord tonight in the giving of our tithes and offerings tonight. Amen. Praise God. Brother Steve, if you will, bless this offering tonight, if you will. Amen. Worship the Lord in our giving tonight. Amen. It's good to see Sister Jenny back tonight. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see her back tonight. Amen. Praise God. You stay with me, Sister Jenny. Sister Judy, I want you to testify. I'm going to bring this mic. Amen. I want you folks to hear what the Lord is doing. Amen. Brother, I don't feel with her. I've, I've had trouble with my voice for some time now. A few weeks ago, I went to the doctor. The doctor was going to change the motel. And when we did a test, he said I had two large nozzles on my vocal cords. And he looked at me and he said, and I won't touch them. He said, they're too big. You're going to have to have said, there is a doctor in Lexington I want to send you to. He said, soon. So yesterday I went to that doctor. And he done the same test that Dr. Ewing did. And he looked at me and he said, the nodules there. He said, they're not there. He said, I know they're in your report. But he said, they're gone. But I want you to see another doctor. And he could not see me for three hours. But I stayed in Lexington. I went to the other doctor. And she said the same thing. She said, there is, there is some uh, redness. There is some swelling. But she said, there's no nodules there. So I had two doctor specialists to diagnose that yesterday. The devil's tried to get me. He says, but you're still hoarse and you're still coughing. I said, yeah, I'm still hoarse now. So two or three weeks ago, got up there, got in. I was the only woman with the issue of blood. I passed it off. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's our God. He's a healer yes, tonight. Amen. amen. Praise God. No nodules. Doctor said they're there, but they're not there anymore. Amen. Praise God. Facing surgery, but she's not facing surgery anymore. Yes. That's my God tonight. Amen. Yes. That's my God tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. He's still. In the healing business tonight. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So thankful to the Lord. Red testimony, Sister Judy. She called me yesterday, and then we was in Kroger's yesterday, and she called me and gave me that report, and I had me a little spell right there, right smack in the middle of Kroger's. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's our God. Tell me who but God can yeah. do such things as yeah. he's. Amen. Praise yeah. God. There is none other. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. He's our healer tonight. So thankful for what the Lord's doing 
in our church. Amen. Praise God. Sister Jenny, you got a song tonight. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. Heaven, well, we worth the journey when I get there. Brother Paul, it's going to be worth the journey. Hallelujah. I said it's going to be worth the journey when I get over there. Amen. One more time. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Someone else tonight got a testimony. Or I turn this man and God loose. Someone else. Come on, Sister Diane.
Jimmy's going to be praying. Amen. Praise God. That fluid stays off. Amen. Praise God. Our God is able. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Someone else tonight got a word of testimony. Praise God. Praise God. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm thankful for what I feel in this house tonight. Amen. I mean, it feels the Lord in this place tonight. Amen. He's in our midst tonight, and I'm thankful for what I feel. Amen. I appreciate this man of God that's going to come tonight and, and give us the word of God. It's been a, I was going to pick up tonight where he left off last week, but his, uh, it's been an extremely busy week for me this week, taking care of matters in our church. And it's uh, been one of the busier weeks that I've had since I've been here. And so I've asked the man of God to help me tonight. And uh, I'm going to try my best to pick up next Wednesday night where he leaves off tonight. But uh, I appreciate this man of God. Amen. Coming and uh, giving us the word uh, on prayer and fasting. And I just want to encourage you as your pastor, amen, to, to keep pressing in. Uh, keep pushing in, praise God. Uh, you may not think nothing's changing, and I may be unsure whether God even hears you when you pray, but I want I want to assure you tonight, He hears you every time that you pray. Amen. Daniel had to wait for 21 days before he got his answer, but the Lord let him know, I heard you the very first time that you prayed. So keep pressing in. Amen. Let's give this man of God a good hand tonight as he comes. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, man. And, uh, and as we, we're in the midst of this 21-day fast, and, you know, as we continue to examine the benefits of fasting, and we look, one of the, one of the, my favorite passages is, is in Daniel. And as Brother Eric said, you know, Daniel was fasting. He had to wait 21 days. He was fasting and praying. And he had to wait 21 days. And there was some, there was some circumstances that happened that he had no control over. But I want to first look at Daniel chapter 9, verses 2 through 5. It says, In the first year of his reign... I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God <clears throat> to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. I pray and... O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to keep his commandments. We have sinned, we have committed iniquity, have done wickedly, have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. So we see Daniel as they're in the midst of this 70-year exile. They've been carried away to Babylon. And we know Daniel's story, how that they made a decree that, that he couldn't, they couldn't pray. They couldn't pray to their God anymore. Daniel defied that order. They weren't going to stop him from praying. And you know, he got cast in the lion's den, but the angel of the Lord shut the mouth of the lion's den. So Daniel began his pray, fast, and he was... Praying and fasting, praying and fasting goes hand in hand, and, 
and he was in sackcloth and ashes. And you know, as much as going on around him, he was surrounded by ungodly people. And Daniel, he stood alone, and he began to fast and pray. And we see what God did through his, his prayers and, and by his humbling himself and fasting. And, you know, we think about the 21-day fast, and, and what is the significance of 21 days? We know Daniel waited 21 days for his answer. We see 21 days mentioned for different happenings of the Bible. They say the children of Israel had 21 rebellious events after leaving Egypt. Paul wrote about 21 sins and advised Timothy to, to turn away from those sins. Jesus appeared in 21 places to confirm his resurrection. So it's just not a number that we pulled out of the air, but why, why 21 days? You know, 21 days is the day, number of days of victory over the principalities which was stopping Daniel from getting his answer sooner. And we know in Ephesians 6, it says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of the darkness and spiritual forces of evil. So many times, something that's unseen, the spiritual forces of evil may come between, may delay our answer from God, but God is still, still working. 21 days of fast was chosen by, by God, not Daniel. If Daniel had chosen, he would have had his answer instantaneously. We, that's what we want. But God, he, he got his answer. He was working on this the whole time. But 21 days of fast helps you overcome the enemy by, by going after the enemy and, and destroying his plans. So during this time, God was coming against the enemy. He sent the angel Michael, which is a warring angel, and he was working on this. So Daniel, and you see in the rest of chapter 9, that Daniel is, is sensitive to, to his people's needs. He, is, he was saturated with God's word, and he, he was sympathetic toward the fellow Israelites in their plight, and, and he surrendered to God. Daniel had a burden for his fellow man. So what did he do? He, he fasted and he prayed and he covered himself with sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth was a sign of submission. Ashes was a sign of symbol of, of sorrow for sins. So he turned to fasting and pray and he got into the word. He, he, verse 2, he said he, he got into the books, the books of Jeremiah, the writing of the prophecy of Jeremiah. He got in the word. And, and verse 2 tells us that he got in the word. We have an advantage over Daniel. We have the entire Bible to reference, to lean on. We are in a period of fasting and praying. But we also need to be in the Word to see what thus saith the Lord. I, Daniel, observed or understood the writings, the words, the book. He didn't completely depend on devotionals or commentaries. These are all good. But he said, I got into the word. And that's what we need to do. We need to see that. We need to understand what thus saith the Lord. So what was Daniel's petition? You know, Daniel believed in the prophecy of the books available. Daniel couldn't read 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for us. Daniel is a diligent student of scripture. And he built his prayer life on the Word of God. And that's what we do. We build our prayer life. We know what the Word says. We know what the promises in there are for us. We know what is required of us. And we get into the Word. We understand that. We know that. You know, we could, uh, we could summarize the section of Daniel's prayer. It said he, he confessed that the Lord God is holy, just, and righteous. And I challenge you to read Daniel 9 when you, when you get home tonight. 
God had been forgiving and, and compassionate toward Israel. However, they had, they had sinned greatly against him in, in every area. They, they defied his commands. So shame had fallen on them. There is a repercussions for, <clears throat> for sin. <clears throat> sin will take you farther than you want to go. <clears throat> it will cost you more than you want to pay. So there is a penalty for sin. And the Lord is just keeping his... <clears throat> Excuse me. Promises concerning the curses that come upon them. Daniel's true heart of prayer is to be recognized by his confession to God. He said, God, we have sinned. His example shows that confession of sin will, will both be about personal sins by, and by identification with those groups to which you belong. Daniel's sins had four points. Daniel's prayer, I'm sorry, had four points that we should model that shows a true heart of prayer. It was rooted in scriptures. I read in verse 2. He had been in the book. He had been in the word. So it was, it was scriptural. What he was saying, what he was praying for was commands of God. It was scriptural. And it was, his prayer was revealed in his confession. He said, Father, we've not done the things that we need to do. We've not been the true servants of you that we should be. And, and he comes to him humbly asking, thank you. So we come to God in prayer. We come in it's rooted in scripture. We come confessing of our shortcomings. And we come humbly asking. The Bible tells us that we can come boldly to the throne room of grace. But we don't come making a lot of demands from God. We come humbly asking him. And he received answers. God is faithful to, to always Answer our prayers. He got into the Word see what God said, what God's commands were about this situation. He confessed his sins and the sins of these people and their shortcomings. And he asked God, and I'm going to ask God to, to intervene in this situation. And when we pray, when we pray through prayer and fasting, we need to spend time listening to God. Because he's going to answer. Sometimes we get so busy and caught up that, that we don't wait for an answer. Sometimes we want to take matters in our own hand. But wait upon the Lord. Listen to him as he gives us guidance in these situations. Daniel prayed and fasted for 21 days. Over in chapter, in chapter 10... In verse 2, it says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. So here he is again in a different setting, and he's fasting and praying again. And this is the one where it took him a full 21 days to get his answer. Daniel had an important position in the government of Babylon. He, he was one of the chief rulers in both the Babylonian and Persian Empire. But even though he had an important position in government, he knew he needed God more than ever. Many, many Christians that maybe have been a Christian a long time find fasting and praying helps them to rediscover their, their first love for God again. David said, I humbled my soul with fasting in Psalm 69 and 10. He said, I humbled my soul with fasting. It's a humbling situation. Fasting is a powerful tool in spiritual warfare. It's a type of Christ sacrifice. Christ sacrificed 
through fasting, we, we lay down our life. We deny ourselves. We lay down our, our needs, our wants, and desires. We give up something during a fast. For most people, it deals with food. You know, food was the enticement that caused Adam and Eve to sin, resulting in the fall of mankind. Food, they said it was pleasing to the eye. And we know, even when we're in the midst of a fast, if we're fasting some, some suspicious food, that is so enticing to look upon. Jesus began his earthly ministry to, to redeem us from sin by, by abstaining from sin. Forty days in the wilderness, being tempted by the devil. You know, one of the first things Jesus felt in his earthly ministry was hunger. Think about that. When he was in the wilderness... The devil enticed him. He said, make these stones become bread. Jesus replied, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. One of the first things he felt was hunger. The last thing he felt on earth was thirst. As the Lord of glory hung dying on that cross, John 19 and 28, as he hung on that cross, dying on that cruel cross. He said, after this, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. One of the last things is said on the cross. The enemy tried repeatedly to cause Jesus to focus on his desire for food rather than the uh, assignment and purpose of his father. If Jesus needed to fast, how much greater is our need to fast? Jesus said in John 4, after his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, and the disciples had gone to buy food, and yet he needed to be about the Father's business. There was a, a soul that needed to have that personal relationship with Jesus. And the disciples asked him, said, aren't you hungry? Don't you want something to eat? And I'm paraphrasing this. But Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of the one who sent me. He said, look. He said, don't say there's four months and then the harvest. He said, look, the fields are white for harvest now. The fields are white for harvest now. When the Holy Spirit calls you to fast... He is preparing you for what is ahead. We don't know what we will face in the coming days. But this time of spiritual renewal, this time of praying and fasting, is just preparing us for what is in store for us. We don't know what, what is in store for us. He's preparing us. And as I said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is our spiritual food. We need that spiritual food just as much or more than we need physical food. When we fast and humble ourselves, forsaking our natural desires and and focus on our Heavenly Father. We sacrifice our bodies as a sign of obedience. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's not unreasonable. And he said, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Prayer and fasting involves spiritual discipline. 
Just as presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, we take control over the flesh. Eating is a eating is a natural craving of the body. Putting food in our body. We know we need that nourishment. But we also need to have this spiritual nourishment just as much or more than we need the physical nourishment. Presenting our bodies to to God wholeheartedly is worship. Prayer and fasting is an act of worship. Brother Eric didn't call this 21-day fast just to just for something to do. It is such an important part of our church life. As we start and begin a new year, start reaffirming our commitment and drawing nearer to God. God designed these bodies to enjoy food. Food satisfies a natural craving and is necessary to, to give us the energy we need. When we give up something that we enjoy, such as food, it is evidence that we desire to, to know God more. It is an act of worship that shows that the value that we place on worshiping God. It just shows the value that we, we place on in worshiping God. When we, when we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, and we renew our mind as we pray and fast and seek God's will, then we don't conform to the world. We're set apart. We're sanctified. We're set apart from the world. We don't conform to the world. But we transform our minds and our hearts to the will of God. Just as Daniel fasted and prayed for Israel, we need to pray for America. Daniel refused to conform to the ways of Babylon, even so far as I said, of being thrown in a lion's den because of his desire to, to serve God and to pray. And God, we know you are faithful and that your, your promises never fail. But we are in desperate need of a spiritual awakening in our country, in our state, in our nation. We have sub sinned. We have rebelled. We've turned a blind eye to your word and your commands. We've compromised your word. So many, many churches today is compromising the word of God. And when, when you see that happening, what's it going to do to the ones that's sitting and listening to that false teaching. It, it's leading them astray. Jesus said in the last day there would be false prophets. We're in the last days. We would all agree to that. I think many have failed to, to teach their children about the Lord. Our children today are, are going through a a terrible time where we many haven't been taught and they don't even understand their gender. And this is not a popular subject, but it's, it's true. We are, we are failing that. I'm glad that we have a, a church that, that has a, an interest and wants to teach our children. Their children... Get around in the Family Life Center over here. Their children here, they're learning about Jesus. They're, they're teaching. They're getting the word. Worship has become unimportant to so many. As church attendance is 
is falling. You see Daniel's concern about God's chosen people, his, his fellow Israelites. And he was burdened. He was troubled. And what did he do? He fasted and he prayed and he took those petitions to God. We've become lovers of pleasure more than of God. We have condoned evil and calling it good. Let the spiritual awakening begin with us through this, this fast and, and not end when the 21 days have ended. We could set aside a time each day, even after this 21 days is up. We could set aside one week a day to pray and to fast. There's so much that we, we need to see happen. We've got friends and loved ones that, that if Jesus came back today, might not be in heaven with us. We need a renewed burden for the, for the lost. Let this spiritual awakening begin with us. I see a spiritual awakening in this church. When you come through the doors, you can, you, you can feel it. You can feel that stirring. God is on the move here. And all God requires is just obedient people, praying people, praying brings revival. Fasting in prayer will bring a renewed commitment. It will bring revival. We'll see, we'll see results from this time of prayer and fast. I firmly believe that. We're going to see evidence of God moving and working in this. Let us as a church body examine our own lives. And may we not find anything that, like Daniel mentioned, Lord, we have we've not been obedient to you. We've, we've failed you in so many areas. Let's examine our own lives. And during this prayer to fasting, renew our commitment to be about the Father's business, to be the disciple that he's called us to be. We want to know you, Lord. Know you in the power of your resurrection. Yeah. We present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. That's what he wants us to do. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. May our sacrifice as well as our prayer and our fast be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Daniel said, I set my face to the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth. I prayed. Daniel pleaded with God and he confessed. We have not always obeyed the voice of God or walked in his ways. All of Israel has transgressed the law. That's what he's telling those people. Does it sound like America today? Daniel said the Lord watched upon our evil. We don't hide nothing from God. He knows what's going on in our life. We don't hide nothing from him. He knows. Oh, Lord, he said, oh, Lord, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead. Let your face shine again with peace and joy. Don't you know it saddens God to see his people just running here and there and that worship is not important to them. It saddens God, I'm sure. You know, as I got to thinking about this prayer and fasting, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. While he was president during the Civil War, he made three proclamations. In September of 1861, the last Thursday in September of 1861, he declared a nation, he called the nation to fast and pray. On the 30th of March, 1863, he said, we need to repent as a nation 
through prayer and fasting. That was the second proclamation. The third proclamation, the first Thursday of August in 1864, he made a special plea for those in position of authority to seek God through prayer and fasting. The president of the United States, the 16th president, after 9-1-1, 9-11, George Bush called a day of prayer. He didn't mention fasting. There is a day set aside now for a national day of prayer. The first Thursday of May be May the 4th, 2023 this year is a national day of prayer. But they don't mention fasting. I think prayer and fasting goes hand in hand. You can pray without fasting. But when you pray... And you fast, you come humbly to God. And when we pray and fast, there may be hidden circumstances that it takes just time, short time, to get our answer. But we can rest assured, we can say with utmost confidence that God heard us the first time we ordered that prayer. He told Daniel. The angel Michael said. Daniel your prayer was heard. The first day you prayed it. But Daniel kept praying. And he kept fasting. For 21 days. And God answered. His prayer. When we pray and fast. When we're during this time. of period of Prayer and fasting. God is going to answer our prayers. Judy's testimony in that bears witness of that. God is going to move in a mighty way. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a healing God. He's still in the saving business. He wants to, it is his desire that everyone come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And through this prayer and fasting, if you've got family members that's lost, just keep praying and fasting and get ready because your answer is on the way. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for just the general reminder that many times we get impatient. But God, you heard us the first time we even uttered that prayer. And we believe our answer is on the way. So God, during this time of Fasting and praying. and Lord, we're excited to see where all this is going to take us. As we renew our commitment to you. As a church body.